Hello there and welcome back to another video here on the Master Moldy channel. Now last Wednesday for me, Thursday for you, we started work on the brand new Lego City Star Wars modular, which is I dubbed Tatooine Tower and that is in Taylortown just down here and today we're starting on floor two which is centered mostly around the Lars homestead. Now I do have quite a few ideas what I'm going to do for the next two towers as well but I think doing this weekly is a nice way to stretch out each tower and make sure that I don't eventually just give up and leave the rest of the city because we still haven't done the pavements and I'm really hoping once we get this tower done and we have a full row of towers at the back we can start work on that pavement and tile it off, get some details, perhaps some drain covers and just get a load more people back in the city because at the minute they're all on a base plate just in front of me and it does look really really cool especially some of the power miners, the alien conquest and all the other figures that I used to plate with growing up but it's not as cool as if a lot of them were over in the sea. Perhaps we even need a UFO or some sort of scene with the aliens and all the other city folk but we'll get on to that once we've done the tower today we are going with the Lars Homestead for floor two of the Tatooine Tower the first floor was Moss Eisley we won't really be taking a look at that in this video I might recap it once I've done the full tower but if you did want to see that check out last week's video I will leave it on the end screen if you haven't watched it already but the Lars Homestead not really much to do. I could do the kitchen. Lego have already made that with the Aunt Brew for the gift with purchase with the UCS land speeder. I want to make it centered around Luke's room, but I still want to add perhaps a cup of blue milk reference in the kitchen. Perhaps we can add a few different parts and perhaps we can have a workbench with a droid referencing Anakin's house, which isn't the Lars homestead. This was before they moved in with the C-3PO that he built. Perhaps I can even add a chest with a lightsaber in referencing Kenobi's hut and perhaps the diary that Luke then later on takes. I could even get some lightsabers buried in a corner as well referencing Rey. We want to try and cover all the other bases but I'll probably be doing a pre A New Hope. We've got the Moss Eisley Cantina from A New Hope. There is something coming from the Mandoverse later on that will have a bunch of original trilogy references in and I've already got a prequel floor planned as well. So this is sort of that gap between the prequels and the original trilogies. The buried lightsabers like at the end of Rise of Skywalker. A little sequel reference as well just for any sequel fans out there and I think the next thing we got to do is start building. So the first thing I did was got the base plate that we're going to be building the Lars Homestead foundation on. Double checked it was the same size. We have a history in the Lego city of making the buildings the wrong size. I mean, just take the heights of all of them that you saw in the last video. Some are seven bricks, some are eight, some are somewhere in between. And I double checked throughout this that I was keeping to that seven brick high, seven ish brick high. I think that doesn't include the base and the tiles on top and then just started building the outline rather than starting with the interior which I did for Moss Eisley and I'll be honest I'll probably do going forward just because of how much easier it is to get my quite big hands in the 16 by 16 space well once I've built up the exterior it's only a 14 by 14 place inside and if I built any internal walls like both of these have so far it does make it very very complicated but you can already see I'm keeping the same technique from Moss Eisley using the 1x2 modified bricks in both that dark nougat and that dark bluish grey and then there's a few 1x4 tan masonry bricks I've also used the stripy modified bricks in a tan colour as well throughout it and right now I'm building a bed for Luke and I've realised Luke's legs don't fit because I'm using the short legs so I do end up putting C-3PO I think on the bed later on and that is referencing him being on Anakin's table when we first meet him but now I'm moving on to the oil bath because I have for the bed used a 1x4 modified brick I'm using 1x1 modified bricks here as well to keep the oil bath in place it just makes it a lot easier to give it the roundish look that we see when C-3PO jumps in it in a new hope and I again end up putting R2D2 I think I've made the oil bath 
a little too big, but I really like the fact that I went with the bigger size later on. I increased the height to two studs rather than the one just to get it off the floor a little bit and add a step to the left. But I had a rough image in mind of what I wanted when I started building this modular. I don't know if it turned out the exact way I wanted, but I thought I had all the bricks ready to build this. I pull out so many more bricks. The pile of bricks you saw me pour out at the start were actually from the Moss Isley diorama that my fiance sorted, which was a massive help because we were running low on bricks last time because I didn't use any of these bricks. In fact, I forgot I even had the box lying around. So it's not only helped with this one, but I've then sorted and put away the bricks with my other brick boxes so that when we build the next two floors, which I really don't know if we're going to have enough pieces for, but the next one's got a massive window anyway, so that really shouldn't be a problem. And you can see I'm starting to build some windows here. I was going to add a load more of the windows we used for Moss Isley. They're just the two brick high, one by two windows. I think you can clip a few different accessories in them, but I instead decide to go with the, well, I end up using a few of them. But the windows I introduce here are from the Moss Isley Cantina UCS set. I've modified them a little bit, I think, to make them my own. I don't entirely remember the same design. And the reason I don't Google it to try and find out is because I don't want it to be exactly like the Moss Isley. I don't want to see something else. I want to copy that design. So I have completely just from memory tried to recreate it. And I add them as well as the other windows that we use on Moss Isley trying to keep some patterns like with the brickwork across all of the towers. In fact, I'm looking at the modular tower here now that I've built it and I realized I've used one by two masonry bricks in that dark nougat and before I used the wood effect bricks. So there is little differences between each one. Perhaps I can keep that to every other floor on this tower, but I'm building the first window here and then I build the wall up around it, try and get that exact same height because not only does it have to be a plate higher than the bricks that go in the middle this is the arch that i'm talking about but because i've then put it on a jumper to offset it i need to build the arch up a plate even higher but i do end up building a little inside wall here to get a little cupboard we see something next to the oil bath in new hope and i had a little reference image on screen you can see the window goes slightly in and that is right next to the inside wall to try and mimic that cupboard like design and it's actually eventually where i end up putting kenobi's chest which perhaps the lars were throwing out luke's toy chest and that's what kenobi uses to store the lightsabers because he doesn't really have much when we see him in the kenobi show and that is roughly the time that this building is taken from you can see i've actually taken one of the crates from the new mandalore ambush battle pack and i did have a tower of like five or six of them i went a bit crazy and didn't buy five or six sets because this channel is making nowhere near that money but i did take my own parts and build a few more of them so i could have a few towered by the tire bomber the x-wing and just to build a bit of the scene up, I actually end up using three of them crates in this little room. You can see this is the point where I decide that the one brick high oil bath didn't look that good with C-3PO standing in it. So I increased the height to two. I just doubled the same design and used a two by two tile instead of a one by two and actually set R2D2 in it because it was big enough for a Lego astromech and as i said c3po thing ends up lying down on the bed but as i'm starting to build up the walls a bit more you can see i start to make room for some of the windows i added one right at the close part of the build and then on the far side behind that inside wall there is also another window and one above the bed so spread out around the sides and then the same thing that i did for the first window with the arch and the bricks in the middle sort of a window with the shutters down, if you will. We see a load of these arch designs, especially around the Lars homestead. And that's something I really wanted to include on this level, especially after last week, really wanting to include it on Moss Isley in the first place and just completely, I don't know if I forgot or I just didn't really have the time to 
break it all down but it really does look good on the last floor and it's also right above Moss Isley there is one visible from the top of the tower front on so that when it gets put in the city you can see it right above the cantina door so Luke is technically living above a pub but I continue that pattern of the modified one by twos as I said a few different tan modified bricks as well which aren't as recognizable they don't stand out as much but they just add that little detail on the surface and as I approach the top I'm trying to find the right bricks I have in mind just to make sure that no separation between two bricks goes without a brick covering the top of them basically I don't want a tower of one by twos because if I was to put any pressure on them they'd cave in and I want the whole building to hold itself together you see it with brickwork in real life I'm just trying to mimic that design in Lego so if any of you know a lot about brickwork I'm sure you'll see a few different techniques going on here I have no idea what I'm actually doing but I just hope that it comes across a lot lot better on camera now as we get to the top I started to worry that I didn't have enough tiles and I do actually change up how I am connecting the two towers I think for Moss Isley there was two one by two plates and a two by two corner plate that I use to hold on to the top actually I'm building Kenobi's crate right now and we'll take a closer look at that in a second I won't spoil that too much and I think we just saw C3PO getting put on the bed but as I'm collecting all the tiles that I think I will need I do switch this up and um, again we'll get into it in a second we will be taking a closer look at the second floor as well as what I've changed for Moss Eisley you get a brief glimpse at Moss Eisley if you haven't watched last week's video but I don't have enough tiles to continue this going up so I'm either going to have to switch out the tiles at the back I'm not smelling the Lego here by the way I'm peering through the windows to see which angle I want on the front of the tower because I would like to try and light these up at some point perhaps once we've done the whole city we get the pavement out of the way first we'll finish off all the other Star Wars modular towers because I am going to be replacing the old ones with other planet modular towers from Star Wars and perhaps add in a few references from different shows movies and other fantasy franchises which I got a few in mind but you can see I've told it up with two one by four tiles with two studs and if we were to take off the roof I don't think I showed you the roof in the Moss Eisley video I think I built this between videos and it does look really really well, it just fits with the rest of the tower you can see the cantina down here and you've got one of these really nice windows on the top but if I pop off the roof you can see that was just so so easy and we don't have them one by four tiles not the ones that you just saw me place on and that is because I've changed them to regular tiles rather than the modified plates because all the plates holding this roof together and there's definitely room for an Easter egg or something on the underside of that means that the roof holds itself on well enough actually at any angle but you can clip that in there and these plates in the corner are actually what's holding on the roof and that goes for this floor as well I've done the same with some corner plates you can see just under there and they hold on to the bottom floor without needing any other studs because a lot of the 1x4 modified plates or the 1x2s were sticking to the floor above it so as I'd pop them off I'd need to then pull them off and it was just a lot of struggle especially if these are going to be moving around because like I say we don't know what's going to happen with the city yet this could go in any direction I could decide that perhaps I don't want each tower themed off a planet and I want to do it based off a movie instead include different planets in one tower so I want to be able to just pop off one of the levels and place it on any other modular in the whole entire city perhaps we can even jumble these about and get it looking really really weird once we've done them all again this is quite some time down the road because if we're doing about a level a week we'll get about a tower a month Done, which is a lot of modular builds and we've got a ton of plates down there that I can be breaking off of the other ones and using them for the future builds we've even got the friends towers that at some point I do want to switch up and make that tan wall look just a bit better perhaps even just replace it with bricks and have a whiteboard sticker like I mentioned in the last one 
for the comment of the week or do something like that, which I think would be really, really fun. But let's take a deep dive into the Lars homestead floor and then we'll take a look at how it looks in the Lego city. And taking off the roof once again, it's just so easy to pop on and off. You can see it's a bit sparse, especially compared to Moss Eisley. I'll give you a glimpse at how packed Moss Eisley is. And then we go up to Luke's room and it's a bit empty. We have a chest of drawers over here, a dresser, if you will. And that's got the blue milk carton and the classic red Lego cup. I was going to include one of the clear glasses. I think it was like a martini glass or something we got with the Harry Potter CMF. But I've got to include that Lego red cup there, which is really nice. We've got R2-D2 with an oil bath, another crate there. And you can see the inside of the windows, which just stick in that half a stud and look really cool from the outside. But that does mean... You have them slightly bulging on the inside. Perhaps that's the shutters that have been pulled down. That's quite a nice effect. One little inside wall so we can section off this corner with Kenobi's chest. We've got two sabers, kind of a reference to the ones Ray buries, but realistically they're just Anakin saber, Kenobi saber. And then we've got the book of how to build a saber with perhaps Qui-Gon Jinn's crystal, which Luke may use to build his in return of the Jedi. Hasn't really been explained. I mean, Disney would definitely go down the Rey route of him having built his own, which is what Rey eventually does for her yellow saber. But I like the fact that that could be Qui-Gon's crystal that Kenobi holds on to. He just dashed to the archives before leaving the Jedi Temple with Yoda. Or even before that, because he then ended up bumping into Anakin on Mustafar. But we've got a lamp that's also featured in A New Hope. A work desk which is piled of boxes, a nice air conditioning unit here on the right which C-3PO is just chilling on the bed as well. But the best feature in this is if I can line up the camera up to the window, you can see R2-D2 having his oil bath just through the window. You've got to get it at the right angle, perhaps I will try to get that when it's in the Lego City. But that's why I want to light it up because if I were to just put the roof on, nearly called it a lid, put the roof on and try and look through that window, you can't see anything. I'll be honest, even without the camera, I can't really see anything in there. Even though we've got one window, two windows, three windows lighting it all up. And actually, they do look very, very similar on the side here. So I should have probably switched the windows around, but they don't really light up, even Moss Eisley. It's not really lit up by any of these windows, but it does look really cool. And now it's time to place it in the Lego city. Because of the new connections that are holding these levels together, it was so much easier to put this back into the city compared to some of the ones around it, which have all the studs holding them together. So that's something I'm definitely going to have to change. And there's a few tan tiles I can definitely still for one of the future ones. And I've even got a few of the lighter tan bricks up there that I might change out for darker ones at some point. But I'm really liking the way this is looking. Now that we've got more of a tower in place, when there was just one building, it looked like a scene from up where you've got the little house in the middle with these skylines towering either side, especially these on the right. We didn't get to finish the ones on the left, but they look good nonetheless. I will be rebuilding this goldfish and I don't know if I'll be keeping any parts from, I could always keep like the front of Emmett's house and have that on the side. Perhaps at the start we can have the fronts of these. Definitely not this one. I'm not a fan of the dark red wall. And actually that's all my dark red bricks basically here. I don't think I've even got any more masonry bricks. You can barely even tell there's masonry bricks used there. So let me know what you're thinking of the plans for the city because I'm much like the detail that Star Wars is bringing. We've got the Jawa crashed into a lamppost, Han Speeder on the left, Hunters in the background parked up outside the sandwich bar, and then we've got Mando and the Imperial in some sort of chasing just out the front. So I'm very happy with how it's looking, especially now that we've got the roofs that just pop on and off. That is a game changer for this Lego city. So perhaps between now and next week, if I do want to do anything to the city, I will be changing all of the stud connections on here 
and just adding the corner plates that I've added to Luke's homestead to enable the, the different levels of all these towers to come off and on more easily. But let me know what you think of the city so far in the comments and have a guess what you think the next tower is going to be because I am already planning ahead and I think I know roughly what I want all of the other towers to be. So have a guess in the comments. I won't tell you if you are correct or not, but at the end of the month, I will post a sneak peek to what plans I have for the city next month. And I really do hope you enjoy this journey that we're coming along because it's like a whole nother city is being built. It will look so different to how it used to. And I am so excited to see the final result, but it's gonna take some time. Again, it's gonna be about a tower, eight months. So make sure you drop a like if you did enjoy this video and subscribe so you stay along for the whole journey. Check out all the videos on screen now and may the bricks be with you always.